Like most people in the medical humanities, I backed into this field accidentally. I supervise medical students in my clinic, and they have to hand in these medical write-ups for me to grade. Now, the write-up is a standard medical history, chief complaint, history of present illness, past medical, physical exam. But the language of these student write-ups always drove me crazy. They would say things like, no cardiac murmurs were appreciated, instead of, there were no murmurs. Or, the patient admitted to having chest pain but denied having a fever, instead of, the patient had chest pain but no fever. As you can imagine, these write-ups got pretty dull to read. It was like the interrogation of a corpse. But worse, there was nothing about the actual patient left in there. So finally, I asked them to please just tell the patient's story, drop all the jargon, and just ask the patient, what is it like to have your illness? At first, the students were a bit confused, but they rose to the occasion, writing engaging accounts of their patients. They also found that by focusing on the story, they uncovered critical clinical cues. There was a young woman with asthma who kept getting asthma attacks because of the dog in their apartment. I know we should get rid of the dog, she told the student, but my boyfriend would be completely crushed. The medical student wanted to incorporate multiple points of view into the story, so decided to interview the boyfriend. And the boyfriend said, I know we should get rid of the dog, but I could never do it because my girlfriend would be completely crushed. So the student brought them together, and they finally decided to give the dog to a friend. And the asthma got better immediately. Score one for storytelling. Over the course of a year, I began to accumulate a wonderful trove of essays. At the same time, we had a new chair of medicine, Marty Blazer, who was asking his students to write essays inspired by patients. So we thought about maybe making some sort of publication for these student essays. But then, we thought there was probably a broader societal interest in health and healing. So we decided instead to create a literary journal that would feature poetry, fiction, and nonfiction on these topics. We created the Bellevue Literary Review and took out a tiny call for submissions in a couple of writing magazines. We were immediately flooded with more than a thousand submissions. We stumbled onto something that resonates with many people, that there is a need for creative ways to examine how we grapple with illness. 17 years later, the BLR is still going strong. We now get over 4,000 submissions every year, and they come from all walks of life. Illness and health are apparently unending sources of inspiration. The creativity that comes from literature is critical for trainees in medicine. The standard medical education can promote concrete thinking. This is obvious when I see interns engaging in cookbook medicine, diagnosing and treating patients with all the sophistication of a clerk at a local bagel store. To me, this is the most critical reason to introduce literature into medical education. Poetry, for example, can seem like the least practical endeavor on earth. Poetry doesn't improve insulin resistance, open up a coronary artery, or remove a tumor. But a good poem teases out the tiniest strands of emotion and holds it up to the light, rotating it slowly to catch all the nuances and all the warts. This is one of the reasons that doctors need poetry. We walk fast, we talk fast, we eat fast, we write fast, often all at the same time. We spend our days reading the most dull language conceivable. The sterility of the language of modern medicine would not allow one single staphylococcal organism to grow. What a delight then to allow your focus to drip deliriously into one spot, to wallow in the pleasures of the particular, to allow all extraneous detail to melt away and be left with a pinpoint of pleasure, a morsel of clarity, a sliver of insight. But the main reason that literature resonates so well with medicine is the use of metaphor. When a patient comes to us with headache and stomach pain and foot pain and a hundred other complaints, they are really speaking in metaphor. We may call it somatization disorder, or write them off as complainers, but in fact, it is metaphor. To be skilled clinicians and to get the right diagnosis, we must be able to interpret our patients' metaphors. Otherwise, they will hunt for another doctor with a more sophisticated understanding. Occasionally, I get at my gumption to present a four-page poem to my medical team. The poem, Gaudiams Igator by John Stone. The poem was written as a commencement speech for a graduating medical school class, and is filled with lots of memorable lines. But I always take care to draw attention to this one. John Stone wrote, 
for you will learn to see most acutely out of the corner of your eye, to hear best with your inner ear. And I'll say that one more time. For you will learn to see most acutely out of the corner of your eye, to hear best with your inner ear. These are the ways that poets view the world. And we can become better doctors and nurses if we learn a bit from the poets.